Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Exotic Podcast. Uh, today we are very fortunate to have Mr. Govind Das with us. Uh, he is an exceptional speaker in the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and on astrology, on dharma, as you can see here, Upanishads and the Srimad Bhagavatam, of course. He is very well respected uh, in the community for his integration of different Vedic sciences like spirituality, Gita, the astrology, which we know as Jyotish and different other things uh, and also connecting them with uh, our personal journey uh, as and presenting it as a dharmic wisdom. And today uh, we have this podcast where we have uh, discussed so many things from the Ramayana, the Mahabharata and uh, including astrology. So for example, importance of Muhurta and uh, importance of different nakshatras. So very, very, very unique uh, podcast with him because uh, you, if you are in your spiritual journey and you are confused, if what will happen to your karmas you know what kind of practices are you doing what astrology has to do with it Uh, then uh, will your karma be vanished or will you still get your karma as it is so today uh, Govind Prabhu discusses all of these things uh, in short of course in this one hour podcast so uh, if you are interested to know what happens you know if what happens to your karmas uh, when you start practicing practicing some spiritual path then you are in the right place that's exactly what you are going to get today and as you know his email is here govindas at gmail.com and you can also follow his instagram handle at govindas official all right thank you for joining and please enjoy the podcast and leave your comments below uh, i will pass them to him all right thank you and Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to have uh, Govind Prabhu with us. So, please uh, let me know. Please let us know what would you like to share. Very excited to hear from you. <laughs> no, thank you, Lajit. It's my good fortune that uh, I'm able to converse with you. I've seen some of your Insta post, and one of my friend Priya Chaitanya he mentioned about your contribution in Jyotish Shastra. What I've learned Jyotish Shastra from the the Indian thought process, Jyotish Shastra is considered as the eye of the Vedas. So whether you are studying Puranas, Smriti Shastras, or for that matter, Ayurveda, Whatever you take, because it is an I, you need to have it. And the great Parashar Maharshi, one who wrote treatise on Jyotish Shastra, was the father of Vyasa. Hmm. And therefore, you will find the influence of Vyasa quoting Jyotish Shastra to Dhritarashtra in regards to inevitable war on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Okay. You know, he explains to Dhritarashtra that there was something called as a Dhuma Ketu, which was attacking Pushya Nakshatra. And then it was causing inauspiciousness to both the parties. Vyasadeva does not take sides. He takes sides with the realities of life. Prakriti as one great historian Will Durant explained, Prakriti means nature, has no favoritism towards Christ or Genghis Khan. Okay, I see. If they put their hand in the fire, both their hand will burn. That is the reality. Right. You know, so Vyasadev was extremely influenced. More than influence, that is the satya. It is not that he had a prejudice towards his father. Therefore, he was quoting Jyotish Shastra. If you are a scholar of the Vedas, you have to quote Jyotish Shastra. Even the Rasa Shastra like Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. Right? Shukadev Goswami, apparently, he had no connection to this world. 
but in the fifth canto of the bhagavatam when he discusses the planetary positions he explains how the planets influence other planets okay imagine if mangal is able to influence shukra entire planet is influencing another planet what to speak of the ordinary living entities yes you know it is but natural they'll be impacted by that okay. right correct so so therefore the distinction between jyotish shastra and bhavishya shastra bhavishya is later introduction the foundation for bhavishya has to be jyotish shastra okay you know study of the psychology of the grahas because the word graha means to influence graha means to consume graha means to impact so the word itself makes very clear what do they denote mm. right. right for example when the mahabharat battle was happening vyas dev explained that generally the amavasya every paksha for that matter mm -hmm. you know it is the paksha 15 days mm -hmm. right but here the krishna paksha after the purnima came within 13 days okay and plus there was a eclipse also so there is eclipse plus there is a amavasya and the combination of that two was making it very clear that and people like duryodhan will only make it happen <laughs> they will not try to put control over it rather they by their ignorance and arrogance this is the two things ahankar and agyan when ahankar and agyan are combined together we create many many duryodhans okay you know they say no i don't care yeah you know i don't care to all this realities hmm. and they actually make the words of the great teacher come true okay hmm. so that is the you know the foundational reality of the of the dharmic scriptures hmm. even for that matter the great ashtanga hriday compiler vag bhatt apparently vag bhatt was not a follower of the vedas he was following the buddhistic idea but even after following the buddhistic idea you cannot avoid the karmic principle you know both the buddhistic philosophy and jain philosophy jain philosophy is called nastik philosophy which is they only declare it is not we are saying they only say we are atheistic in nature mm -hmm. and buddhistic philosophy which is agnostic in nature but both the parties do not reject karma theory correct so therefore these both philosophies are much closer to dharma tradition than those who believe in god like the abrahamic hmm. okay okay hmm? you no know, in abrahamic religion you do not accept anything but god but wow. in dharmic tradition you accept god and god's laws okay okay if somebody does not accept ishwar but accept the ishwar's law mm -hmm. when they are able to see the laws of ishwar they are also respected okay right so vagbhata in ayurveda explains the ashta limb ashta anga of ayurved one of the ashta anga is a basically jyotish shastra okay i see Hmm? jyotish shastra shakun shastra like an ayurvedic doctor a traditional ayurvedic doctor basically when somebody would come inside what time they came he would calculate the prashna kundali was manifesting in their mind only correct and they were able to tell this medicine is not going to work for you. okay huh? similarly again it is very universal 
the hippocrates the founding father of modern medicine the, or the western medicine yeah even in his writing he explains there are two things certain if you want to be a doctor you should experience what is pain and second you should know astronomy okay i see okay hmm? you don't you have to learn both of this that adds a greater impact in your treatment of the patients right so whether it is scientific study ayurveda or modern medicine or for that matter muhurta for a marriage or for that matter somebody has born somebody dies mm. so timing becomes very pertinent for the followers of the vedas oh yes hmm? so in one sense they are supposed to be very very precise in regards to being on time okay mm -hmm. nowadays in bharat we see most of this marriage of elite people who are highly educated so called highly educated with fat wealth mm -hmm. they do not give much attention to the purohit purohit is a simple symbol they say do it fast do it fast hmm the bride and the bridegroom they will not come on time for the muhurta oh, okay no so they never get married on proper muhurta okay without realizing they have changed the muhurta in the ramayan when uh, uh, mother sita was kidnapped by ravan right Mm -hmm. ravan had chosen particular muhurt okay when he stole when he stole mother sita in particular muhurt that muhurt indicated that anything is lost it will not come back to you okay so ravan used the jyotish shastra for his advantage acha okay so <laughs> okay. when he kidnap but then what happened our great jatayu hmm jatayu had many layers of psychology oh. he said no i can't see this i am a witness of a lady being kidnapped i yeah. can't just watch correct right so he knew the science like i was talking to some psychiatrist doctor he said there is a perpetrator and there is a victim mm. okay there is a perpetrator and there is a victim so here we can say sita devi was a victim ravan was a perpetrator correct and who was the witness jatayu was witness yes so if the witness does not take an action mm. the victim is more pained by the silence of the victim than the aggression of the perpetrator okay correct okay so jatayu could not take that pap he could not take that sin okay so he said even though i lose my life it doesn't matter hmm i have lived enough i will going to fight correct but before fighting he gave advice and he fought ravan to such an extent but there was one hidden reason why jatayu was fighting ravan to the extent of losing his life that he did not tell ravan okay ravan basically gave heavy beatings to jatayu yes jatayu was able to kill the chariot driver yes i think as far as i understand mm -hmm. and when ravan stole sita devi when jatayu met ramachandra bhagwan what did he say he said विंदो नाम मुहूर्तोत्सव न का कुस्त सो बोधुता हि सेड हे राम द नक्षत्र द मुहूर्त व्हिच रावण इज किडनैप दैट इज द विंद नक्षत्र एनीथिंग इज लॉस्ट इन दैट नक्षत्र हैज टू कम बैक सो जटायु फॉट विथ रावण टिल ही चेंज द मुहूर्त ओके सो दैट नाउ सीता देवी विल कम बैक इन द बिंदु एंड रावण कुड नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज बिकॉज़ ही वाज अब्सॉर्ब्ड इन फाइटिंग एंड किडनैपिंग सीता ही डिडंट रियलाइज दैट 
in the mohurt has changed yeah, so jatayu was fighting on all perspective he was fighting on the astronomical perspective he was fighting ravan to stop verbally he was fighting ravan physically hmm it was not just the battle of the the strength it was a battle of psychology of verbal it was a battle of physical strength and it was also a battle of astronomy hmm. right and therefore that is the first thing he says in a hundred percent my dear lord ram you will get back your wife okay, nobody can stop it <laughs> unfortunately when we see marriage or any activities for that matter whether it is marriage whether it is upanayan samskar whether it is vidya aramba there are particular muhurtas hmm. okay we do not focus on the muhurtas but we focus on the vip coming for that ceremony yeah yeah yes yes hmm? and sometimes this vips are basically you know they represent intense rahu yes correct correct right they represent intense ketu they represent inauspicious you know combination imagine you are waiting for them to come then you start the celebration so marriage sanskar mein the marriage samskara rather than being auspicious it becomes inauspicious okay okay hmm? so therefore it is an important principle that in many places you know our great teachers have given this understanding like yudhishthira maharaj is a jyestha nakshatra correct because of the jyestha nakshatra right there are many challenges hmm. at the same time because it is the jyestha nakshatra he is certainly born as a elder brother Correct. इतना सारा उत्तरदायित्व ही टेक्स सो मच ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑन हिमसेल्फ करेक्ट सो दीज आर दू नो फैसिनेटिंग रियालिटीज फ्रॉम अवर शास्त्र विच डील विद द कॉमन सेंस विच डील विद द प्रफॉर्म शास्त्रिक एविडेंसेस एंड ऑल्सो इट डील्स विद द न्याय शास्त्र ऑल्सो ओके and uh, regarding the muhurata that you said like uh, ravan had kidnap kidnap sita devi so i i guess because he did not know about this the lakshman rekha which was there maybe so that might have caused further delay maybe in the muhurata that, that might be possible or some editions of the ramayana say there was no lakshman rekha that was like there actually so what's your opinion on that of course lakshman rekha is not even mentioned by uh, our uh, as far as i understand even ramcharit manas does not mention lakshman rekha neither valmiki maharshi mentions okay both of them they do not mentions but again there is a loka praman and there is a shastra praman okay even the great teachers of uh, vaishnava philosophy or even the advaita philosophy they mentioned there is a classical evidence that is shastra praman scriptural evidence yeah and there is also folk tradition as long as folk tradition does not contradict the shastrik praman the evidence so even that story may not be there but it does not disturb the spirit of ramayana oh okay correct so one can quote that story but one should tell very clearly this story is very beautiful fantastic story but the story is not mentioned by valmiki maharshi nor it is mentioned by our tulsidas maharaj okay okay yeah and ravan when he came it's it's very interesting because ravan did not expect this one ah oh, yes right the jata will come he had both mentioned marich what he should do what is going to happen ram will go behind you know the golden deer right then lakshman will go looking for you know that all he anticipated because ravan was daksha but what he did not anticipate jata is interference okay 
and Jatayu not only interfered in stopping Ravan, but he changed the whole game by changing the Mahurta. Okay. Hmm? Yes. So, so that is that is the. Yeah. So basically, if I mean hypothetically, if Jatayu would have not intervened. Then Ravan would have uh, kidnapped Sita Devi in that Muhurta where she would have never come back. So, hypothetically. So, therefore, one may say, how is it possible? How can this apply to the Supreme Lord? Yeah. You know, how is it applies to Ram who is an avatar of Vishnu? Does yeah. it require Jyotish Shastra? Mm -hmm. No, he does not require Jyotish Shastra. We require. So, therefore, he submits to the sciences. Okay. No, therefore, he is called as Dharma Gopa Dharma Raksha Dharma Pal. Okay. You know, the concept of Avatara in Sanatan Dharma, even though he is the source of Dharma, but he becomes submissive to Dharma. Okay. You know, he doesn't break those rules. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, so, so basically that form, essentially means he arranged the Leela in such a way that uh, Jatayu intervened and then the Bin Muhurata started later. See, again, the word he arranged, he doesn't get involved in arranging because if he's arranging, that means he's not absorbed in the Leela. Ah, sorry. Right? He, all, yeah, he allows the he allows the Prakriti to make it, you know, when, when, when the Lord is appearing, he actually covers himself with his own yoga maya so that he can go through all the excitement. If he knows everything, there is no fun only. Ah, oh, okay. You know, he covers his own divya buddhi with his own yoga maya so that he can actually get into the entire aspect of that excitement. Okay, so in the Ramayana, like uh, this is there, like there's this uh, constant two things are going on. One is like uh, they <clears throat> glorify Lord Ram as supreme, and then also he has that human aspect. So that so for that to balance, like this, this is done so for that. Basically, in Valmiki's Ramayana, Valmiki Maharshi maintains the description and the declaration declaration of Ram being supreme very few times. Okay, I see. Okay. Because again, if he continuously keeps saying. Just like if you are playing a role in a drama. <laughs> okay. Right. You take a role of an uh, ordinary beggar. Yeah. And your mother has called many people to watch that drama. Mm. They have come to watch the drama. Mm. They don't They don't come to watch you as there. They want to see what your role is. If your mother keeps telling her, this is my son, this is my son, this is my yeah. son. What does it do? It disturbs the mellows of that drama. So therefore, Valmiki Maharshi he understand in the mood of Sri Ramachandra, which he had told the Devata. He said, when I come here, I will act as a Manushya. Martya Avataram, Martya Shikshanam. Mm. Oh. Both Sri Krishna and Sri Ram specifically, specifically Sri Ramachandra more than Sri Krishna, he allows the limitation to rule him. Okay, I see. That is what Maryada. So there is a Maryada of Jyotish Shastra. There is Maryada of Nyaya Shastra. There is Maryada of uh, giving promises to others. There is Maryada of being submissive to his parents. Now all this Maryada he follows. But while following this Maryada, he also able to fulfill his promise to the Devatas of killing Ravana. Okay. Huh? And uh, in my knowledge, like when uh, Lord Ram and Krishna, they were born, that Muhurat is also very special. It's known as Abhijit Muhurat. Yes. 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 You know, again, why why they did not choose a Muhurta, which is not so great? You know, so one has to understand one of the quality of Avatar. What is Avatar basically? Avatar is a harmony between Manusha and Divyatva. Okay. It's an integration between humanness and divineness. Correct. Bhagavat Tattva and Manushatva. When they are harmonized, so that is called as Avatar. 
and what does he do that avatar generally he does not break the rule <clears throat> okay he breaks the rule <coughs> in specific cases not to not to prove his supremacy but to prove his compassion like krishna married 16108 queens yes that no manushya can do Correct. that is only bhagwan can do correct but he would expand himself into 16000 he made a 16000 palace he was simultaneously present that is bhagwan but that same sri krishna when he would come to sudarma's palace he yeah. would become one oh yes yes you know there he did not walk around i am 16108 he protected parikshit okay but with abhimanyu he said this is part of life if you are part if you are taking part in the battlefield death is inevitable right mm -hmm. he did not he did not bring the dead to life you know so these kind of miracles are very 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 ordinary you know one uh, one philosopher he was a little strange but he made a very interesting point you know when uh, jesus christ right he rose a person from dead lazarus i think his name is uh, he wakes him up from the dead correct so this philosopher asked this question you know yes the primitive people he showed his miracle but eventually what happened he died again oh. if not today after 10 years after 20 years right. death is inevitable right on the other end lord buddha again follower of you know nastic philosophy but still the karma theory is there when a lady came to him asking you know my son is dead please 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 you know revive him lord buddha did not tell her immediately a dead dead person is dead he said go and bring a mustard seed from that house where nobody is dead Okay. She ran. She ran looking for the mustard seed. Anybody was willing to give. As they were about to bring the mustard seed, she would ask, "Is there anyone in your family who is not dead?" They said, "Yeah, last years back, or three years back, or four years back, somebody died." So she comes empty-handed <laughs> with an empty katori, empty bowl. but her brain is full of understanding that is inevitable mm -hmm. so lord buddha revived her dead consciousness rather than reviving her dead son okay so then she kind of uh, did she lose the desire to get the son back <laughs> because he was dead yes right her consciousness was revived oh. you know she was able to accept the inevitable Okay. rather than fighting against the inevitable so therefore therefore jyotish shastra you know one of the principle of jyotish shastra is not to give santvana santvana is giving sympathy to people okay they are supposed to give the truth to them satya but unfortunately most people are not capable to handle the truth correct you know that we may not predict one may not predict the future but even indicating about their present situation when people cannot handle it you know they are so much pocked by it so it is the responsibility of a jyotish shastragya to bring them slowly slowly closer to helping them develop the capacity to deal with their reality and therefore yoga shastra comes in the picture okay hmm uh, jyotish shastra cannot say i only do jyotish i have nothing to do with philosophy yes then that is a very dangerous thing a jyotish shastra should know the foundational principle of at least some of the upanishadic ideas like bhagavad gita okay and yoga has the power if not remove your karma at least minimize the karma if you cannot minimize the karma 
but increase the capacity to handle the karma. Okay, increase the capacity. Okay. Yeah, to handle the karma. Okay. So uh, that means like uh, this, I also heard long time back that uh, in the Vedic culture, there was no, there was no astrologer who did not know Ayurveda, nor was there any doctor who did not know astrology. So it was like, and, and yes. more things. Yes. Okay. Even the great Sanatan Goswami from the Vaishnava tradition. Yeah. You know, he did not only teach them the pure Shuddha Bhakti. He wrote literature on Shuddha Bhakti, but when you would interact with the people, he also would give them certain advices for their life. Okay. Okay. You know? So you cannot be a learned person without knowing something about everything. Okay, something about everything. Okay. <laughs> you no, know? like if you are a Pauranic person, but you need something about the Vedas because they had to study Vedas, something about Jyotisha. If they did not know Jyotish Shastra, they will recommend, okay, you go to this person, get something out of him, then we can. So there was an integration of all the great people to work in such a way, you know, that the person who came to them seeking advice, solution, benefit, they got a wholesale picture of it. Okay. Not just isolated. Okay, so th that's like literally like in today's scenario as they try to claim like holistic development, something similar to that. <laughs> we call, therefore, Krishna told Arjun in the Gita uh, that, uh, you know, Samagram Maam Tata Shrunu in the seventh chapter, in the beginning of the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Samagra, Samagra Samyagraha, Samyag means integrated. Okay. Integrated. So when that integrated approach is there, then what does it do? It adds to your greater growth. Okay. Okay. So when he says integrated, like astrology, Ayurveda, and other yoga sutras and bhakti, everything is like included in that. That is all integrated. If you are going to, a, therefore, what happened after the independence of Bharat? Again, that's a myth. India was, Bharat was always independent. You know, politically, the British ruled for some time. Yeah. You know, the greater greater slavery was not just freedom from political reality. That was very important, no doubt. But the greater freedom was basically freeing oneself from the clutches of, you know, the blind, black and white approach of the Western ideas. Very black and white. If this exists, this should not exist. If religion exists, you know, here religion is not, we are not talking about dharma. Religion is yeah. faith-centric. Correct, correct. Faith-centric, something that exists, then the science cannot exist. Correct. If science exists, the faith cannot exist. Correct. Therefore, in the Western world, to be a Gnostic means to cancel everything, hmm. which is religious. <clears throat> okay. Right. But right. in Sanatan Dharma, you don't have to because, you know, if you are a Rishi, if you are studying from the Rishi, the Rishi Jnana is connected to so much of investigation. Therefore, there is Dharma Jigyasa. Hmm. There is Artha Jigyasa. Huh? Then there is Moksha Jigyasa. This is called as Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Yes, yes. Right? All the Jigyasa are there. So all these jigyasa are they are not contradictory to each other. Okay. They don't have to be contradictory to each other. You don't have to be a nasty to become a scientific person. Okay. Because many times the Indian scientists not they don't know about Vikram Sarabhai who started the ISRO and I am Ahmedabad. He was a great student of Bhagavad Gita. Oh. Right? Mm. Yes, that's right. He was a great student of Bhagavad Gita. But then those who were like half-baked scientists, okay. they became, they tried to follow the Western people. Oh. But you don't have to be, you have to study your own Shastras to understand ke how much science is there. So you can integrate between your science and Shastra okay. easily. 
right and therefore ayurved like i remember talking to one kerala traditional ayurvedic doctor he said ayurved is not science ayurved is the shastra oh okay interesting yes so what is shastra and what is science science is focusing on pratyaksha praman direct evidence yes okay but ayurved or jyotish shastra or for that matter nyay shastra they focus on three pramanas okay if you go to nyay shastra the pramanas become more and more detail there are more than seven as per as i understand but basically when if you take three pramanas pratyaksha pramana yes right so uh, ayurvedic doctor will see the scripture Right. after studying the symptom of a rogi yes he will see the symptom and he will give the medicine which is recommended in the ayurvedic text right he gives the medicine and after giving the medicine whether the if the medicine is not working he is not adamant to say that no this is what the scripture has spoken therefore i will not change the medicine he okay. sees the pratyaksha praman the medicine is not working then he says the some permutation and combination that is anuman let anuman. me try this let me try that so there is shastra there is anuman and there is the pratyaksha pramana so because all the three are there that is called as shastra shastra is integrated anything which is physical you need nyaya and pratyaksha pramana anything which is beyond physical you know metaphysical that requires certain shraddha and that which is between the physical and the metaphysical the subtle realities they require jyotish shastra hmm. jyotish shastra is not adhyatma neither it is pure gross material yes yes right it is dealing with the sanskaras it hmm. is dealing with the influences not visible but you can feel it hmm Maybe. right it is easier to be a materialistic hmm easy correct why because it is gross it is easier to be spiritualist because it is beyond matter okay <laughs> very easy you know those who believe in islam christianity you know and hinduism buddhism their number is very high compared to those who do not believe hmm yes. Hmm? yes that's very easy but in between that adhyatma and material there is a subtle karma sanskaras okay that is the problem for people to accept okay you know that is very difficult because the the people who practice adhyatma they don't see this because many time if you study a lot of spiritualist you know sometime out of uh, showing their nishta they ridicule their own shastra though astrology is useless okay okay right okay you are criticizing the very thing which is basically you know respected by the very vyas dev whom you quote hmm you are disrespecting the very thing which is quoted by shukadev goswami who is a rasacharya for the you know vaishnavas right so the subtle thing are very difficult to believe oh. because you don't need shraddha for us so the shraddha for it you don't need direct evidence for it you need lot of research you need anuman brahman okay anuman is required okay yeah, anuman is required okay more than shraddha because jyotish shastra is a is a i don't say it's a mundane science but it is not pure adhyatma correct at the same time it is not pure science i mean science means it's shastra it is much higher than being science science is very purely very i need to see it i need to feel it i need to smell it i need to taste it i need to you know sense of touch has to be there 
you know that is science correct otherwise it is simply theory mm -hmm. so now the jyotish shastra not the the thing is many times when i meet people in different spiritual communities uh, whichever tradition mm -hmm. they belong to they as you said to show their loyalty to their tradition sometimes they uh, downgrade uh, astrology and ayurveda sometimes so then mm -hmm. how should we like uh, how should we try to explain them that this is not something which you need to discard this can also help you so Uh, how do you think we should approach this so therefore references the very scripture what they quote from there only you have to give the references okay. the first canto bhagavatam is there fifth canto bhagavatam is there you know the birth of sri krishna and ram is there mahabharata has got many references ramayana has got many references vyasa dev being the son of parashar maharshi has respected his father's own compilation hmm. you know so therefore it is not stopping you from being loyal to your tradition yeah right. because loyalty doesn't take you anywhere loyalty makes you blind <laughs> you know unevolved loyalty unevolved loyalty makes you jihadi Okay. Yes. You know, you could be a verbal jihadi. Yeah. Yes. You may not have gun in your hand, but you'll become verbal jihadi. Correct. Right. Therefore, Dharma Shastras in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that definition in the twelfth chapter of Gita says, "Who is a devotee?" And in one shloka, it says, "Suchir Daksha Gata Vyata Ha." Suchir, Suchir is authenticity, not just cleanliness. No transparency. You know, and daksha. Daksha means expert. Expert. You know, so he expects again in the Gita. He explains, "I am the ability man." In the seventh chapter, yeah. Shabda ke purusha vrnshu. Oh yes. So when you have certain ability, that is not mundane. That is a spark of the splendor of Bhagwan only. Hmm. so therefore you don't have to be so high to reject it without even understanding it okay and many times people also ask this like uh, they have started practicing a particular spiritual path whichever it could be it could be vaishnav or shaivite or shakta or sometimes even another religion or another path uh, so then they always want to know that now is my destiny karma everything is like wiped out because or or is it getting wiped out slowly because i am getting into my spiritual practices or will it still be there and then some say yeah it it will be gradually gone then some say yes it will not be gone but you will become stronger to handle it so there's no there, there is no clear answer for this so what 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 do you say on this See, adhyatma, adhyatma is connected to atma sakshatkar. Okay, correct. Okay, when you take to the path of adhyatma, you are not trying to work with your karma. You are not trying to work with your ego. You are not trying to work with your mind. Okay. You are trying to work with your atma. Oh, hmm? okay. I see. Atma. So, okay. yeah, atma. so when you use the sadhana of atma sakshatkar for your prosperity for your health you cannot say i will chant lord shiva's name i am so nishtavan yesterday was shivratri yes i am nishtavan hell or high water i will just chant om namah shivaya i will chant om trayambaka me jamahe and he will heal me so right that nishta is good bhavanatmak it is good but it is not complete okay you know you are burdening your very lord you know without therefore the question is in sanatan dharma the principle is simple if you ask your very god ishwar what is important loving you or being understanding your knowledge your laws huh? 
इधर विष्णु रामचंद्र श्री कृष्ण और शिवजी विल से बिफोर लविंग मी रिस्पेक्ट माय लॉज रिस्पेक्ट माय लॉज ओके गॉट इट सो व्हेन यू रिस्पेक्ट योर लॉ देन व्हाट डज इट डू देन यू सबमिट जस्ट लाइक आई सेड वन ऑफ द नेम ऑफ विष्णु इज धर्मपाल यस वन इज अ फॉलोअर ऑफ धर्म In the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, if you read very, read, read very carefully, even the supreme Bhagavan, he says, if I do not follow, if I do not practice sadharma, I will put everybody in ruination. Okay. Then he gives the example also of Janak Maharaj, who was a great personality. Even he followed. so whether you are ordinary or extraordinary you follow the laws of life just like if a great sanyasi puts his hand in the fire yeah and his most insignificant student puts his hand in fire what does it do same it's the same for both the rule is same for them it doesn't matter for the fire fire has no such distinction between an evolved soul and an ordinary child yes yes both of their finger will burn so what is the use then of your adhyatma adhyatma gives you the power to handle the pain of burning your finger okay but burning is not cancelled <laughs> okay uh, if the gross thing like burning your finger with the fire cannot be perceived by us very clear gross it's very gross yeah right very hard how is it possible for the subtle thing to be suddenly disappearing yeah okay so basically you know? like there is some man apman name fame or defame destined to come so that will anyways come because we are doing some that will anyway come and therefore lord nursing dev in the bhagavatam 7th canto yeah then lord sri krishna to the florist in the 10th canto again in the 10th canto when the gopis mm. were discussing of going to the raslila yeah you know the same principle is proclaimed again and again what is it lord nursing dev said bhogena punyam kushalena papam kalevaram kala javena hitva bhogena mm-hmm. punyam when is he saying that lord nursing dev has blessed prahlad you know he has been so ecstatic with his prayers prahlad has been embraced by lord narsingh dev everything has been done hmm then just before lord narsingh dev is going back he says bhogya na punya hey prahlad the quota of your pleasure punya has to be enjoyed by you okay and then bhogya na punya and uh, Look, then papa, kushale na papa. Then your papa is there. Your limitation, your pain. You have to deal very expertly. Okay. Because what is material body? Material body is we can define it is made of earth, water, fire, air, ether. No, material body is made of karma sanchay. Okay. No. the body what we have is made because of the karmic collection okay. so just because i practicing spirituality last however many years my nose has not changed it has remained the same <laughs> my eyes have not changed my voice has not changed i may want to sing for krishna but i may have a terrible voice mm. will it change no it will not change it will not change will krishna say okay now i'm going to give you a good voice no you will not get that voice okay if you are not very good artist and you say no i want to design the dress for the lord yeah i want to make a nice artistic that will not come to you okay yes. have you seen anybody suddenly because they express their desire and all their desires were fulfilled doesn't happen like that and these are the gross things correct what to speak of the subtle say so therefore what does what does the shastra say what does the scripture say the scripture says 
that when you take to the path of adhyatma when you take to the path of yoga so yoga has the power to minimize your impact knowledge has the power if you are given that knowledge from very beginning only like sri krishna explains nadatte kasachit papam nadatte sukrit vibhu he said hey arjun i do not take anybody's responsibility of their virtuous act neither of their evil act mm-hmm. a living entity is bewildered by his own agyan okay he is making it very clear that he does not hold responsible for your evil act and your virtuous act 5.15 in the bhagavad gita okay right so therefore a wise person while developing great conviction in his heart he also become expert in dealing with his karma okay mm-hmm. another principle is very simple when the supreme lord through different you know auxiliaries right ayurveda jyotish shastra nyay shastra manas shastra artha shastra this is all his contribution only for our upkeep okay when he has given all this thing he will become expert in this when you become expert in this as as expert as possible then you realize oh god you know what even after doing all this thing i still need to expect the grace of god okay so sharanagati or conviction in your particular deity is born out of your purushartha and purushartha at some point of time becomes less no i always tell this story the king of mysore was very attracted to leman okay okay leman ah uh-huh. so he received nice looking very yellow color without any black mark right he received the leman he was fascinated wow so clean hmm. right so he said okay you know give two villages to this villager who brought the leman okay mm-hmm. so villager received two villages uh, from the king as a gift as a reward as a reciprocation and he came back to his village and he told his fellow farmers hey you know what the miracle of my layman the miracle of my layman is that the king has given me the village the villager said hey it is not the layman which fetched you village but it is the king who gave you the village he is magnanimous okay the third villager came and he said hey, wait a minute he said yes he said you may be true that the village and the layman are not very proportionate they are disproportionate in value yeah hmm? you know they are disproportionate in value but unless the layman was given it you would not receive the village only so layman is our endeavor through all this you mm. have to show that layman and the limitation whatever is left is provided by ishwar okay so when you say ishwar provides the limitation so like uh, how do you uh, like how would you like try to quantify it so suppose i am trying to do something and that is like not falling sufficient so then he does he gives the remaining because sometimes he does not give so <laughs> how do you uh... unless you have put all your strategies properly you have played your role properly yeah you know if you have not done your role properly you have half hazard but then you say no you know my lord will take care doesn't work like that okay you know and whatever you have learned again you experience you experience rishta deva in jyotish shastra you experience rishta dev in your ayurveda you experience rishta dev in dhanur vidya so you are experiencing your lord in all these sciences and therefore you learn it 
you become educated and because you're educated you become confident not arrogant mm. and that confidence when it comes to you then you also realize oh my god the knowledge is limitless and i am so insignificant mm. so only highly elevated person because of his vidya he become very humble what makes you humble when you realize that i am so less mm. compared to the vastness of gyan how can i claim i know everything mm. those who know very less can opanishad no explain those who know very less mm -hmm. they think that they know everything okay yes but those who know many things they know that i know very less mm. therefore they are always seeker hence you know it is explained the jyotish shastra should always be taken as an indicative science oh should not be taken as a predictable science okay indicative science okay okay indicative science you know it's an it's giving an indication it is telling you the latent it is telling you the potential it is telling you to it's telling you to the what could be what are the potential you know growth you can have what are the potential limitation you have it's an indicative sign therefore in one of the puranas you know which is published by the purana is not published mm -hmm. but the tirupati tedity the tirupati temple has published very nice three volumes of book where people are asking question you know and they have compiled these questions and they have given answer from the shastra and one of this shastra where bhagwan shiv ji is speaking to mother parvati and he says as the time becomes more and more covered by ignorance kaliyuga in kaliyuga means there is a greater covering of ignorance okay you no know? yeah. the knowledge is more covered it is not completely because you cannot completely cover some covering will stay away so therefore he says 50% of any jyotish shastra ka jyotish shastra ka prediction will always remain incomplete oh. he said nobody should be so arrogant to say that everything i say will always be correct that means he is trying to be ishwar yes correct he is trying to be ishwar and therefore you know somebody send me a beautiful quote some of these very famous people you know this uh, his name is uh, what's his name yeah he mentioned that uh, better to be roughly right than precisely wrong <laughs> the great warren buffett he said uh, He said there are three portfolios he would operate. What are these three portfolio? He said um, he would always have three piles on his desk. They call it in, out, and too hard. Okay. He knows which to buy and he knows which to sell. These are the two reality. And yeah. third is too hard, Baba. I cannot manage it. I don't know. Okay. Okay. And who is he? He has made his money so much. yes so therefore as you learn more and more that much you realize that how less you know mm. and that is the time you need to be receiving the grace of parmatma in the theory of chakra right when you reach the seventh chakra there is intuition and there is cognizance okay hmm? so cognizance is basically a feminine energy sorry it's a masculine energy okay and uh, the intuition is a feminine energy okay okay yang and in correct right? yeah. pingala and ila nadi yeah. surya and chandra nadi surya oh. is cognizance and chandra is basically gut feeling okay 
<laughs> you know, therefore, Steve Jobs in his book, in his autobiography, I think, one teacher showed me, I have not read it, but one teacher showed me, he said he harmonized between the system, what he learned from America, mm -hmm. and the intuition, what he learned in India. It's oh. in his book. Okay. Okay. Yeah? So therefore, Paramatma has to be there. So I recommend people who are listening to read 18.14 from the Bhagavad Gita. 18.14, 18.15, oh. where Sri Krishna explains five causes for all action. Okay, five causes. You yeah. know, causes. So therefore, Gita harmonizes between Parushartha and Daiva. Purusha, Purushartha means self and ever. Yeah. Daiva means grace of God. Okay. You know, the Buddhistic theory is ascending. You know, I will put my efforts and I will achieve perfection. The Christian theory is that I will descend. You know, I will, I will descend. I, I means I want God to descend. I cannot do anything. I'm useless. Hmm. You know, I'm part of the original sin. So how can I help myself? I cannot help myself. Original. So there is dainyata. There is so much of dainyata. Okay. And here there is so much of, uh, you know, I can manage it. So if you read Gita 18.14, so it's harmonizes between your self-endeavor and the grace of God. And therefore, when you take a task of something beyond your capacity, yeah. and when you work to achieve perfection to that, like the Murti Karwan who made the Murti of Ram Lalla, the Vigraha of Ram Lalla. Yes. I can't make it because I am not expert in it. I can't make a painting also. Right? So he is extremely good in making Murti. Mm -hmm. So he made that Murti. He studied all the science of how to make Murti. He made it. Yes. After making a Murti, he realized now for Ram to manifest in it, it is beyond me. So everywhere, what does he say? He said, it is not carved by me. By me. I was simply an instrument. Mm, okay. No, it is beyond me. So that is how you see the indication of Paramatma. And therefore, the Jyotish Shastra, you know, can be very intoxicating for people who start finding success. Uh, and therefore, this famous uh, author, Nasim Taleb, wrote a book called as Fool by Randomness. Okay, Fool by Randomness. Yes, a very good book, right? So, there are many uncertain things. Many uncertain realities make it happen, but that should not be your life. You cannot live a life of uncertainty. But you should also know that uncertainty is part of life. Mm. And strategy, system, dakshata, everything is your responsibility. You know, certain and uncertainty come together. Okay. You know, vision, vision caused by learning and darshan caused by the grace, when they are combined together, then you realize, oh, my layman is very small. Mm. It doesn't fetch the village. Mm. Okay. My prediction is very insignificant. Yeah. Then I make so many mistakes. But when the grace is involved, then how is it possible for you to be arrogant? Not possible. You cannot be. So in that context, so, uh, for 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 suffering in general, like uh, of course the main reason is maybe we 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 have our sins and because of that we are suffering our own karma, and apart from that there is also this uh, reason for refining us so that we don't do it again. So that that is how you see it, or do you think there's something beyond that also? There is also karma theory, no doubt. But interestingly, Bhagavad Gita focuses more on. Ignorance being cause of your pain. Ignorance being cause of your pain. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you are ignorant of anything in your life, whether you have good karma, bad karma, doesn't matter. Because of ignorance, you will not 
you know, right in your house, there may be a packet of diamond, right, because of your karma. So karma doesn't walk into you. You have to walk into your karma. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, so therefore knowledge is important. Therefore, Gita explains one is situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge. You know, api cheta si papi bhyo sarve bhyo papa krutama sarva jnana plava naima vrajanam samtirashi. One who is situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, he can cross over all ignorance. Similarly, in the fifth chapter which I quoted, 5.15, na adatte kasachit papam, na adatte sukritim vibhu. You know, this will, I'm not responsible for both of them. Agyan ke karan, agyane navrutam agyanam, tena muyyante jantama. You understand? So yeah. therefore, Jyotish Shastra will give us great knowledge. Hmm. And one aspect of that knowledge is I know very less. Hmm. And I want to help people based upon my limited knowledge. I am not the doer. I don't take responsibility. You know, but I give you facilitation. I help you to grow. I am simply a facilitator. I am not your guru. I am not your god. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Because this is... Can we, can we do second session? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think this is very good. It's, a, it's one hour, more than we did, more than one hour. <laughs> okay, so I will now stop the recording. Thank you so much for yeah. uh, your time and uh, the viewers. Please let us know down in the comments what, uh, what, what inspired you the most. For me, there were so many points which I can write. And uh, also, what more would you like to hear from him? I am very sure we he would be delighted to answer your questions in the comments or make a session on it later. So thank you so much and uh, please stay tuned for yes, my, two of this. My my pleasure, Abhijitji. So hopefully we'll meet again. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. Thank you.